Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So today I'll be showing you three ways in which you can read environment variables in Python. Now environment variables are those that you may need to keep secret as you may not want to expose them to everyone you're working with on a project. Now these can be sensitive database passwords, they can be sensitive API keys that you may not want to share with other people you're working with. So using environment variables to share them with to basically keep them separate from your code is quite a good practice. So we're going to look at three ways in which you can be able to basically separate this from the code and easily access them. So I'm going to show you three ways. The first way we're going to do is by using python.env. So I'm going to create a simple virtual environment right here. So I'm going to pull up my terminal. And what I'll do is to create a virtual environment in which I'm going to install some of the third party packages that we may use. So to do this, I'll do Python. Sorry for this. So this is going to be Python minus M, Venf, and env. So this is going to create for us a very simple virtual environment in which we're going to install whatever dependencies we may have for this example. Now that our virtual environment has been installed, let us go ahead and install our python.env. So I'll do that with first activating our environment with source env. So I'm on Windows, therefore we should go to the scripts folder and then activate. And after activating our virtual environment, I'm going to go ahead and install our python.env with pip. So this is actually pip. So if you're on Linux, you'll have access to pip3. So I'm going to use pip. And then I'll go ahead and install python.env. So I'll press enter. So this will go ahead and install our python.env within our virtual environment. Once this is done, then the next thing is going to be to basically use it to access our environment variables. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a very simple Python file here. I'm going to call it main.py. And after creating this file, what we need is to import the load.env function. So the load.env function is what is what will allow us to basically read these environment variables from our file. So I'll begin by saying from dot env, we are going to import our load.env function. And after importing it, we are going to simply come and call it with load dot env. Right after calling it, then we are going to access these environment variables by using our OS built-in package. So I'm just going to come here and all I have to do is to say import OS. And right after doing that, I'm just simply going to come and all I have to do is to access any of the environment variables that you want to access. So to do that, I'm just going to come here and let's say we want to access our database URI, so I'll copy its key, which is database URI. And after doing that, I'll basically create a variable, which I'm going to call database URI. And after doing that, then I'll use OS to access that specific environment variable. So I'll do that with os.get, and in this case, we shall use the env, get env function. So what this does is to take in the key or the string that represents that specific environment variable. So I'll basically paste it in and I'll use a simple print statement to basically go ahead and print that so that you can be able to see it in our output. So I'll just come and say print database URI and save. Right after saving, I'll head over to our terminal right here and I'll go ahead and say python main.py and that will bring back our database URL. So just like that, we've been able to separate our, our database URI from a file. So if anyone wants to actually use a database URI, they can set it up in our env file and that can allow us to have it separate from our code. Another method I'm going to show you is one where we use a package called Python Decouple. So Python Decouple is one that also allows us to access our environment variables without having to uh, keep them within our code. So what I'm going to do is to get rid of most of the code that we have and also install Python Decouple. So I'm going to say pip 
install python and this is going to be python decouple and right after installing that i'm going to go ahead and basically use it within our code so python decouple gives us a config object and this config object allows us to easily access our environment variables from our env file now since we have an env file here python decouple will detect it and be able to help us access all our environment variables using the config object so let us go ahead and use it so what i'll do is to import the config object i'll just come and say from uh, decouple we are going to import config and right after importing this config object i'm going to simply come and access whatever i want to access so i'm just going to come and say database uri and this is going to be called config now i'll simply create an instance of this and then give the key so in this case i'm just going to pass in the key of that specific environment variable that you want to access and i'll just paste it in there and save right after saving it i'm just simply going to come right here and basically print it out to our output by saying print our database url or uri so I'm going to save and once i've saved that i'll go to the terminal and i'll run our file once again and you can be able to access our environment variable now this is pretty straightforward so another way we can be able to read and manage our env files is using pydantic so pydantic is a data validation library that's basically for the python programming language and the beauty with pydantic is it allows us to exploit some of the modern version modern ways or modern features of python to basically manage our settings so i'm going to go ahead and install our pydantic but pydantic also relies on python.env for it to be able to do this so i'm just going to come and install our pydantic so i'll just come and say pip install pydantic and if you haven't actually installed the python.env you'll have to add python.env just like this for you to be able to manage your settings i'm going to fix this spelling right here and go ahead and install our pydantic Now that Pydentic has been installed, let us go ahead and try to use it to access our environment variables. I'm going to clear my terminal right here, and then I'll go and get rid of most of the code that we have here. So Pydentic provides for us a base settings class that allows us to create one class that has our settings, one specific configuration class. And this is wonderful. And it also uses type hints to allow us to basically manage our settings and help us to validate which kind of data that we may be passing in as a key so let's look at an example so the first thing i'll do is to import our base settings class and be able to create a class of our settings so to do that i'll just come and say from pydantic we are going to import our base settings class and right after importing this base settings class i'm going to come right here and say that we're going to create a class and we're going to call it our settings class now when you have the settings class it has to inherit from our base settings so i'm just going to come and say base settings and i'm going to get rid of this and once we have this then we can go ahead and define each of the fields that we want in this class and these are actually the fields on our environment variable file which is our dot env so i'll begin by reading most of them so we have a database uri an api key and a secret key so that we're going to do this is by basically specifying the key as well as the type of that specific key we can also provide defaults in case we do not have a specific env uh, env variable so we shall begin with our database uri 
and I'm just going to come and do that by specifying the key so we need to be aware of the key we used right in here so I'm just going to come and say database URI and in this case I'll specify the type and this type is going to be a string type. However, also Pynetic provides for us a specific type for Postgres URLs, uh, Redis URLs, and so on, as we are going to see. So we shall begin by making this a string. So right after providing this as a string, we are also going to go ahead and provide our API key. So we're going to come and say API key, and this will also be a string. And right after doing that, then we shall also uh, make use of our secret key so I'm just going to come here and say secret key so this will be our secret key and this will also be a string so right after doing this we have been able to access the values of our of our environment file now all we need to do is to specify where the file is and that is done by creating a simple config class so I'm just going to come right here and say class and we shall provide config so this is the name of the class and what it does is to basically configure our settings so we shall have to just show the first thing we shall do is to show where the env file is so i'll do this by providing the env file attribute right here and then we shall specify that the env file we're going to use is our dot env file now that we've done this the next thing is going to be to access our settings so that will access our settings is by creating an instance of this settings class that we have created so i'm just going to come right here and say our settings so i'm just going to call this settings and this is going to be an instance of our settings class so we need to create a simple instance and let's say we want it as a dictionary we can come and say that we want it as a dictionary so i'll call dot dict so once we have that we may go ahead and print our settings so i can go ahead and say settings and save so i'll just come and run our file so when we do python manage main.py this will go ahead and return a dictionary containing each of our settings. Now we can be able to see our database URI right here. We can see our API key right here. And we can also see our secret key right here. So the beauty with this is we can be able to use type hints to validate which kind of environment variables you're actually bringing in as our settings. So if you observe and right here, we have been using the keys as we have them from our env variables however if you want to change this we can be able to change them and use them in lower case so the reason as to why we just did this is just to make it easy for us to understand however we can be able to change this to lower case for example let's say we change this if we change this to let's say database url or database uri we can also change this to api key and we can also change this to let's say secret key but in lowercase and save now when you go ahead and run it will still give us the same result and we can be able to see that and some of you may may be asking the question why does it have to be like this so basically what it does is to read the environment variable keys and it doesn't really care about the case in which you write them so if you write the environment variable keys in lower case it will recognize them and if you write them in upper case it will still recognize them however if you want to basically set it so that it only reads them within the upper case or so that it reads them as the original keys you can use a certain setting here that basically allows that so you can do that by setting it so we can just come and say case sensitive and then we say this is equal to true so when you try to run uh, our file once again so i'm going to remove this prompt and when i go ahead and run this we are going to see that we now have errors because the specific keys that we need from our env file have not been found 
I hope you've learned from this video and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For me, my most favorite way is by using Pydentic. If you've enjoyed this video, you can also tell me what is your most favorite way in which you read and manage your environment variables. You can do this by leaving a comment down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new. My name is Jonathan and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.